In this video, I'm going to discuss the best test for determining whether or not you have parasites. Also, since false negatives are so common when testing for parasites, I'll discuss what you can do to reduce the chances of getting a false negative result, and I'll discuss the pros and cons of treating for parasites without doing any testing. Before I begin, I just want to remind you that the main reason I put together these videos is to help people with different types of autoimmune conditions and other health issues better understand their test results so that they can find and remove their triggers, correct any underlying imbalances, and feel great again. So let's talk about some of the basics with regards to testing for parasites. First of all, if you want to learn about parasites and autoimmunity, you should watch my previous video and I'll include a link in the description below. When it comes to testing for parasites, most healthcare practitioners agree that the best way to test for them is through the stool. Most conventional medical doctors will order a basic stool panel when they suspect that a patient has parasites, whereas many natural healthcare practitioners will recommend a comprehensive stool panel. But what's the difference between these? Well, a basic stool panel or parasitology will test for a few different markers related to parasites that cause diarrhea. And so if you have diarrhea, then you might want to consider starting with this test, especially if you have health insurance that will cover it. Just keep in mind that it's not the same as a comprehensive stool panel, and in addition, false negatives are common with this type of testing. Let's now talk about a comprehensive stool panel. A comprehensive stool panel looks at more markers than a basic stool test, and we'll take a look at a few examples of some of these panels soon. But you do need to understand that not all comprehensive stool panels are the same. In fact, you can get different results with different comprehensive stool panels, even when testing for the same parasites, and I'll talk about this more shortly. Some of the more well-known specialty labs that offer a comprehensive stool panel include Genova Diagnostics, Doctors Data, Diagnostic Solutions, as well as BioHealth. And once again, I'll show you reports from some of these shortly. One of the reasons why you can get different results with different stool panels is because they use different technology. As for the different technology, an OVA and parasite exam is a type of test that takes a sample of the stool and the technician looks for parasites under a microscope. So with this test, the detection rate is highly dependent on the skill of the lab technician, and as a result, false negatives are more common when compared with other techniques. The advantage of this test is that it can be used to detect pretty much any type of parasite, while there are limitations with other methods. With staining techniques such as trichome staining, a stain is applied to the stool sample to more easily identify the parasite. Enzyme immunoassay is another type of technique used for a few specific parasites such as cryptosporidium, giardia lamblia, and entoamoeba histolytica. PCR stands for polymerase chain reaction, and this is a molecular technique for analyzing the stool sample that looks at the DNA. There are a few different types of PCR analysis, including conventional PCR and real-time PCR, but I'm not going to get into detail about these here. Then there is something called quantitative PCR, which is supposed to be more sensitive than standard PCR technology. So here we see an example of a basic stool panel. So they test for bacteria, viruses, and parasites that cause diarrhea. And the comprehensive stool panels also test for these. It's just that they test for a lot more. You can see here they just test for three parasites that can cause diarrhea, cryptosporidium, giardia lamblia, and amoeba histolytica. And so this is from the GI map, the parasite section of the GI map. And so you could see the protozoa here and the worms here, and obviously there's a worm detected. So with the protozoa, nothing is red flag as being positive, but ideally you want to see everything less than DL, which is less than detectable limits. And you see a few parasites here that are detectable. So the, even though the focus would be on the worms, these might be problematic as well. And this is another patient's parasite results or GI map results and again the parasite portion. So here we obviously see Blastocystis hominis as being elevated and you can also see all the other protozoa are less than detectable limits and then all the worms are not detected which is great. So the main focus here would be on the Blastocystis hominis. And here we see another example. So Endolimax nana is high everything else less than detectable limits and all the worms are not detected. And the GI map uses what's called quantitative PCR. So 
Quantitative PCR is supposed to be the most sensitive technology out there. The drawback is, as we'll see when looking at some other comprehensive stool panels, it doesn't look at as many parasites, but because it's more sensitive, false negatives are less common. Uh, and this is also from the GI map. This is the first page, and this is the parasitic pathogens. On the first page, it looks at the bacterial pathogens, the viral pathogens, pa parasitic pathogens, the ones that cause diarrhea. If you want to look at this in detail, the GI map in greater detail, I did create a GI map overview video. So this report is from Genova Diagnostics. And so we could see here that they detected blastocystis hominis in moderate amounts and the parasitology EIA test here, all negative, cryptosporidium, giardia lamblia, and amoeba histolytica. And so this is using ONP results. And again, that's why you see there's a lot more worms and parasites, not only in this page, but just combined when compared to the GI map. So the benefit is that you're looking at more, you're testing for more parasites, but the downside is that false negatives are common. And I could tell you from self-experience just because in the past I used other labs. I used Genova Diagnostics and I'll see doctor's data. And they're both great companies overall, but I just saw a lot of what I consider to be possibly false negative results when doing their stool panel. So it looks at a lot more. Now Genova, one advantage it has, you see the OMP technology, but it also does PCR. It's not quantitative PCR like the GI map, but it is PCR. And you could see the PCR portion is not too comprehensive, just looks at a few parasites, which are all not detected here. So this report, I'm pretty sure it's from Doctor's Data and it's using ONP technology. And the way we know is just because it has all these protozoa listed, all the nematodes here, and then it continues on this page. So we see again, nematodes continued, the tapeworms and flukes continued. So it looks at a lot more than the GI map from Diagnostic Solutions, but there are limitations in the technology. While false negatives are more common with an OMP exam, you need to know that false negatives are possible with any stool panel. So here are a few things you can do to decrease the risk of getting a false negative. If doing a test that utilizes an OMP exam with or without staining techniques, and even if choosing a lab that uses standard PCR testing, you probably shouldn't rely on a single sample, which is why some companies such as Genova Diagnostics and Doctors Data give the option to collect three samples instead of one. So you would collect one sample on three consecutive days, which will greatly reduce the chance of a false negative. Using a lab that offers quantitative PCR, such as diagnostic solutions, can also reduce the chances of a false negative. Another option is to order a comprehensive stool panel from two different labs, which most people aren't going to do because of expense. One of the recent strategies I learned from Dr. Paul Anderson is to take a biofilm disruptor seven to 10 days prior to collecting a stool sample. A biofilm is a group of microorganisms, such as bacteria and yeast, and they form a protective layer. And while I'm not sure if parasites can form biofilm, they can potentially get trapped in the biofilm produced by other microorganisms, thus resulting in a false negative result. Examples of biofilm disruptors include Interface Plus from Claire Labs and N-acetylcysteine, also known as NAC. This also acts as a biofilm disruptor. So what is the best test for parasites? Well, I've used a few different companies over the years, and as of now, I think that Diagnostic Solutions offers the best comprehensive stool panel for parasites due to its quantitative PCR technology. As with other companies I used in the past, it seems like I had a lot of negative results when I was pretty sure that there would be positive findings, and with the GI map, I'm definitely seeing more positive findings. Some will argue that perhaps there are false positive findings with the GI map, but in my opinion, false negatives with other labs are much more common than false positives with the GI map. The downside is that both standard and quantitative PCR testing, they don't have the ability to detect all parasites. And this is an advantage of Genova Diagnostics as they use an OMP exam in addition to standard PCR testing. So you probably can't go wrong with choosing the GI effects from Genova Diagnostics, although I have used this panel in the past and I currently prefer the GI map. The good news is that in the future, technology will continue to improve, which means that I might need to update this video in the future if one of these labs improves their technology, 
or if a new lab that does comprehensive stool testing comes along with a superior method of identifying parasites. You might wonder if you can treat parasites without testing. After all, while I'm a big fan of testing, I admit that a comprehensive stool panel can be expensive, which is a big reason why some people choose to self-treat their condition. So one of the big advantages of not testing is that you will save a good amount of money. But there are also a few downsides of treating without testing. The first downside is that you might not have a parasite. And if you have a different type of infection, the protocol you're following might not work. A second downside is that even though antimicrobial herbs aren't as harsh on the gut as antibiotics, they can still have a negative effect on the gut flora. So ideally, you don't want to just randomly take them for a prolonged period of time. And finally, if you treat without testing, there will be no baseline reading. And what I mean by this is that if you have any positive results, you can always retest in the future and compare. So if you did an initial test, and let's say you tested positive for a parasite, in the future, you might choose to do a retest. And then of course, you could compare the retest results with the initial test results. And so for these reasons, it usually is best to test rather than guess, and this doesn't just apply to parasites. Are there any exceptions to this? In other words, is there a situation where you might want to self-treat and not test for parasites? Well, ideally you do want to test, but I can't say that there's never a situation where you don't want to just treat. So for example, let's say if you are out of the country and maybe you drink some water, and then start getting diarrhea so you're suspecting that you had parasites and it'll be another week until you get back to your home so you're going to be out of the country for another week or even a few days in this case i mean of course if you can test while you're out of the country that's great but you might not be able to test but you might have access to a health food store we could get some anti-parasitic herbs for example so in this situation, I would say, if, if it were me, I would definitely treat if I couldn't test. I wouldn't wait a, even a few days probably to get back to the United States. If I, if I was in a different country, I would probably just, just assume that it's a parasite and treat. So there are exceptions, but for the most part, I do recommend testing before treating. Although this video focuses on parasites, there are, of course, other gut infections, and if you want to learn more about testing for other types of gut infections, you'll probably want to check out my GI map overview video. If you like this video, please click on the like button below, and if you have any questions on parasite testing, please let me know in the comments below.